Yes, so we are called forward to say, I dreams of the heart, voices round and about. Just start this session of I liberating the contribution of which the Pharrell McCollin to the tabernacle ones and one to the tabernacle you to call. Sisters over there in the quarters, those who are not sleeping, we are asking the item to make the way into the tabernacle. It's what we are all about. I liberating of I dreams of all who are sleep to rise and shine too. Yes, fireman, big thanks. Yes, fireman. Yes, sisters. Sons and daughters of Rastafari. The voices are here. Calling the operas good, operas, we can start. There's no there's no start of a gathering without drums and chant. So we call you ones and ones to come forward to the tabernacle. We can get started. Our, our global family is there waiting on I and I for I and I to just shine up some light on the 129th anniversary. The sons and daughters, near and far, the youth is called. Yeah? No. That's the father. Yeah. yeah, man, as it was in 1892, the armies of Ras Makanen, the armies of Isiwopia, the priests, the bishops, the deacons, the Batawi priests, and all, the villagers, the animals, and all went up to the gospel world. To the home of Governor Ras Makanen to witness and to be a part of this presence that would bring forth a divine fruit from the womb of Lady Neshima Beto in the line of Ras Makanen from the ancient line of Bush and Beyond to the Davidic family. So we're looking forward to ones and ones to come forward. Strike the bass, BSC. We are looking for a nice repeat of the us coming that we can have some chance. All the chanters, we are looking forward to the island too. We just come forward and make it a glorious moment of drums and chant in the order of the entire being. With the repeater, with the repeater, with the repeater. Nice repeater. Anyone who is who's known to be able to play the apps can do so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Voices in the tabernacle, voices come on, come on, final call, final call. We're looking forward to one see us come forward in this moment in this solemn night of chant. In honor of Lich Tafari, 129th birthday. So we know it has been a long night for me. We were here chanting and we were retarding. And we know that today is the day of celebrating Lich Tafari. Greetings, greetings. Hi, Lehi. Rastafari. Rastafari. Yes, I know. I would have just love, I don't know how the program is here, but whether I just love who oh, Malikal Naya doing the session, and then I know yes, to the program. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. 
Yeah, man. Rise up the eyes is Rasaya V. 129, Tilebration, Iowa. Yes, Ross IV, and also please just know that the programmatics really is in the eyes hand. And you and Ross Ivy, so I and I will support, but we want the Naya Bingi family, the leadership, to pull up along with the Idor leadership, our beloved Mama Oleti and Brother Jani. So oh, yeah. fullness, yeah. King I, Ross Ivy, blessings. Yeah. Yes, according to the will, give thanks, I Majesty. Work it through, but all will be well. Give thanks.
but we are here using the medium in a positive way. And we say welcome to all sons and daughters on the platform globally. We know most hands are caught up in their own spaces, doing ISIS globally. Some of our beloved Virgin are seven hours ahead already, some five hours, some another two or three, and some are still behind, as in California, where we know there's a tree like Isaac up there in Squaw Valley, that's Isaac and the family over there. But we do give thanks to the global family celebrating this occasion. We look forward to the day when Itopia will return to the days when the earth here of his imperial majesty is celebrated right across the length and breadth of Itopia, and children will be singing praise songs for his imperial majesty, Ababa Janari and his last first. We pray for that restoration, because we are seeing so we are plunging a sea of distress from 1974 up until this present time, when there is chaos on the motherland. We salute the brothers and sisters over there in Shashamani, who also has stood up in the face of the, the scenarios taking place, and we know the fire keeps lighting, and the eyes is, is ongoing in Shashamani, the praise of worship. His divine majesty, Emperor Ayla Sebastian I. But we do give thanks, we give thanks for the space, and we give thanks to ones who are able to be on, to just be a part of, you know, Idor, Nayabi, or the one big family, you know, shining some light globally on the importance and the significance of Ayla Sebastian I, 129 years. This is, should not just be a Rastafari celebration. Uh, based on the life and works and contribution that the Divine Majesty of Her Isis Lassen first made to Africa, in particular Africa, there will never be a liberated continent and a free peoples of Africa without that input of His Divine Majesty of Her Isis Lassen first. We remember its plea for Ethiopia at the League of Nations, June 30, 1936. He did not just talk about Ethiopia, but all the peoples of the world subjected to tyranny and aggression from the economic predators and land grabbers that were all over Europe and the rest of the world. So we give thanks for his contribution. As we say, all nations on the earth should recognize that the 21st century, the 20th century, from an early time, has seen a great leader Second to none, in the person of Kadamari Ayes Kalasi first, and today should be a day when we honor such a great son of the African continent. So we end up invite us I agree, and then after that we go into a level of reasoning, and it will involve others. Um, I'm not sure how the children have it, but I take the privilege to just introduce Ras Ayabi, as they are known as Talwat needs me learn no introduction. He has been in the forefront for many years as an advocate of Rastafari and an advocate towards the liberation of the world sacrament. He has been seen in numerous spaces agitating for that right. It was a, one of the biggest obstacles in the way because the police couldn't arrest Rasta about criminality. The only thing they could arrest Rasta about was the fact that they made the sacred herb illegal and that placed Rasta for our life in a very serious condition when it comes to law. Rasta has been in the forefront of agitating that I am at the rights and privileges in terms of demonstrations and movements, coupled with the, the elders knocking at the doors and the prime ministers there over years. We have seen. You know, things have changed, but not in a respectful way to I and I, and as I am still here on the front line agitating that these laws recently passed still is to no benefit to the movement. So we are just invite us I am to just come forward. Let me just applaud as I am here to come forward from the next. Yeah, give thanks as I Give thanks to my man Gregory and Christian here. Give thanks to our man, Bridget, and Christian on the platform. And I just want to let one down one know that 
All the time I and I gather and I will bring time and matter to her strong. But having observed and I've been here for years, and I know that more education could have been done where a person and personality of his imperial and majesty, I was a classy, I was concerned. And I know most ones coming to the dinghy will say, Here lies the last guy, Jar Rattapara, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and conquer him as he shall be too. But in terms of his majesty's life and contribution to international peace, to inter Africa dispute, how his majesty went about dealing with issues, most of I and I were in and Christian don't know. So I want to look into it and say, you know what? Uh, I have a lot of pride that we are very educational and informative here. So I'm on call Jalani and say, Jalani, so and so and so and so. And in no time, I hear Ras Wayne call I. And so Ras Wayne and the Igor family is willing to provide a platform that I and I. The Naya being the Virgin and Sistin here could co-host a program with the Igor family in terms of presenting his imperial majesty Iris Rasti life to INI congregation. So I hope that ones and ones who are on the ground hearing this will come into the tabernacle and be enlightened in terms of his majesty's way of life, his majesty's contribution to the liberation of African people, whether on or off the continent. So again, the Igor family, I salute the island for spending such a short time making the island platform be available to Iron Man, and hoping that at the end of the day, leaving here, sealing up this presentation and discussion, and I will feel satisfied that yes, it was worthwhile being here participating in this conference call. There are, have been a lot of rumors and slanders and maligning of my brethren and sister characters by individuals. And then I want to make it clear that this will not continue to happen in the night in the old. The individuals who feel that they have the right to slander, undermine, and malign people's character. There is no space inside the tabernacle for these individuals. And we're hoping and appealing to the international community that this is a stand that must also be taken by the international community in order to help grow the movement that I and I will achieve and our aims and objectives. So again, Lord of Fire, I bred in and sister, I salute the item. The Virgin and sister here gather at the Naya Binge. Yes, I write for the nice iron light of Naya Binge, starting early, firelight, and right through the morning, earthquake, and the, the, the half I have to give thanks to these anchors because. Maybe the earthquake would have gone on to that. No, if I never had to do it. I earthquake, you don't have to burn out the cells, you know. But again, give them what to All right, beloved. So, what I want to do now, I just want to set the tone, you know, of you know, the birth of Lynch Tafari, because sometimes we take it that everyone knows. I, I, in my community, said to me, and I see this idea of a very grown restaurant, and he said, Ras Ivan, you mentioned Lady Yeshiva, who is she? And it was surprising to I that a man I considered, a man with more locks than myself, more eyesight than myself, did not know the name Yeshiva. So I'm saying, we cannot take it for granted that all of us know and has researched his history because Yashima Beck's life was a home in this microphone. Are you better fit? Real Yashima Beck's life came into four in our history on account of the union which 
trust mother that could not be a child. Now, I remember saying to my grandson, I was telling him like a story. And they sat around me a couple of them. And I was telling them that, yes, um, His Majesty's mother's name was Yashimabek, Wazira Yashimabek. She was the wife of Governor Rasma Conan, His Majesty's father. And she became pregnant. And when the time of her delivery, nine months, the child died. And he looked at his face in the south. And I said, well, you know, that's not going to reassure her. You know, they both cried together. They were more the last. And then she became pregnant a couple of years after. A second child. And it might have been seven months, six months, somewhere there about. She lost the second child. And then I saw him look in my eyes as to say, question me, another baby died. And I went on to say, she became pregnant again a third time. And then the third child died. And I said, well, Governor Ras Makone must be a troubled man. She had his offspring died, never came to life. And being a devout Orthodox Christian, he knew that he was not wrong in his doing. He was kind, he was loving and caring to his people, and he governed with justice. So, uh, there's something going on, but you see what I'm saying. Suffer there might be a device so you can have the perfect harmony. So the fourth child died. Then I said to my grandson that Rasman Khane was so troubled, but he went up to visit um, Emperor Medelek. And Emperor Medelek, the emperor of Ethiopia at the time, would pat him on the shoulder and say, come on, Rasman Khane, be not daunted. You're a man of God, and I know the grace of the God of Ethiopia will grant you an offspring from your union. Be not troubled. I we know when he went to church, the Abba would have said the same thing to him. But Rasma Khan wanted to have a seed, a child, a fruit by his union with Lady Yashimabe. I went on to tell my grandson, my grandchildren, that the fifth child she was pregnant with. And Jaim got up and said, No, grandma, not tell me that I want again. And he said, Yes, Jaim. The fifth child also died. He got a little disinterested in the conversation because it seems so sad. But who would not be sad? Because most of us, if we had a woman, a queen, an empress, a wife, and by the time she become pregnant, and you look at it, no, no. That a woman, I would try something wrong with her. I would try to do something, something I want. And then you add the men from the kings, you know, in every country, you have, the, you have the soothsayers, you know. You have the man who feels that he's so highly spiritualist, and you know, he becomes a governor. You know, as a, in a Jamaican terms, you look like smiley out there in life, you know. And you have to make me do something, you know. I mean, what you doing, you know, to get that little thing after your wife, you know. And this is like some evil. But you know, that's not going to be about Orthodox Christian. These things are a bar. They would not subscribe to going to a little, you know, silence man, a little ugly worker, or a little eagle up in a little bush, or a little soothsayer. That's not coming as a man of God. So he felt that prayers and his good life should be enough. So the sixth time Yeshima became pregnant, 
and the things that happen. It's like you have to do. I'm going to spread that. I'm going to go on here. This is serious. Yeah, this is serious. It's like you feel for the to hang up your heart on the middle and the bottom of this thing. Because nothing happens. It's like you plant corn every day and the corn come up and you chew them out and you do that. I said, wait, and you dig up the side and you plant corn again and it's be that. And you dig up and you plant all beans this time and it dry up. I said, no, it's not going to be that side. Now it's somewhere else. That's my coming would not go elsewhere because he's a man of God and the side said, no, I am clean from the grave and what is happening, I must overcome. The seventh child also perish. You know, so you know, when I come to him, I say, Governor, you know, you know, the tell us a smile, you know, walk something in the red up. And you know, listen to me, watch what they are, you should know, listen to me. The eight child come and the same thing happens. Now, what do you think that's my coming child? Can you have some man that come and say, that's my coming? Me have a daughter. From the minute you take off your pants, she pregnant. What are you doing, she? To that she am going to pass my daughter to you. These things must not have happened because everybody wants the governor to bring forth a son, even though he had a son prior to his first wife named Yilma. Rasma Kalem wanted a son by his wife named Yeshima. So with the eight child gone, all the wise men from the field no more, still converging, still dialogue near and say, Governor. Your wife is pregnant now with the nine child. But this time, this child shall live. But you must take your wife from her house up to the other mountain in the glass of Goro to ensure the safety of her delivery. So let's mark on that for you. Then it is God who gives and God who takes life. You have the authority. Then bring the earth to the higher mountain. If the child is dead, the child will be dead. Same way. If it's the will of God. So whether this kid or Aaron are going up into the mountain. So, you know, I'm a little bit distracted by those <laughs> interaction. But, but, you know, um, with all that now, that's my calling on the side and say to the to the, the, the elder, say no man, I don't think taking her up to the gospel world can change anything. If you will have that the child shall live, the child will burn in our heart and live. Well, you know what the, the, the elder would have said to him, well, that's my calling. I have got my word for you, I have delivered my word, and it has gone back to him. It's up to you. So when God has come to me and said, well, huh, uh, my children are still so far and I can say I hearken to this voice, not trying nothing down. So he prepared himself and went to the gospel world, organized the day, and it was said that a unity of priests, bishops, and monks is the villagers around the gas of war around our journey with them, just like a royal caravan going up to the gas of war. Yeah. And uh, even the animals, it was said, animals were seen making the trek along the road into the bushes from limb to limb, going up to the gas of war and the higher mountain. So, so is the country house to ensure this safe living. So you know, as we gather last night, it's drums and charm from the from the ancient church of Itawokia. The, the armies of Rasmakonin were here too, armed to the teeth. And then they have man they say, oh, we know how to all our evil. I am up there too. Because them said, by any means necessary, Rasmakonin son shall live. This child shall live. And then even prior to that, they said um, astrologers and seers were saying that in 1399 they saw Neptune and Pluto moving towards each other in a eocentric line, and it went to 492 years for these, uh, these 
that is to bisect each other. And that may affect the constellation of the Lord. That child was born in Ethiopia and it shall reign as the conquering light of Judah upon the children of Israel. So, they too were looking out to see this manifestation. And it was said that in 1892, a star also came up that became synonymous to the birth of Christ. And if you read David Talbot's Silver Jubilee, he, he, he wrote that Haile Selassie I was said to be born as a fortunate star and was regarded as a progeny, a special child. So at that night, you know, the drums are the chant and everything is going on, and the midwife inside a prayer, and one of the choir was to, to our lady. St. Maria asking the mother of Christ to be near the sheep of it, as of the more what not one of her children has lived. So all those cries, and it was more rest my hand, it was being pierced on his veranda, going from one end to the next in sudden meditation and prayer. And you know, you would have done so. You know, so the Hallelujah uh, can tell it. The prayer up, that was the mood of rest my hand. And at the time, when everyone outside the drums and chants and incense burning and everything, and when Rasmakonin heard the door open, and when the door opened, he heard, he heard a cry, and a midwife highlighted from the, at the door and said, Your governor, my governor, a son is born. And then they hear claps of lightning and thundering and showers of blessing. And then the arms outside start fire the rifles in celebration and the drums and the chants and the jubilation and the lulation went out the miles and the rain that has ceased for a number of years has said in the scripture, we shall come down like rain upon the many grass and thy showers which water the river. That Saturday, lynch the four eyes, Mahonin was born. And as they said, the midwife wiped a little butter on his lips that he made known to choose the good and refuse the evil. Hey, 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 so the drums and chant continue to come. Lynch the far eyes came from the room and Rat Mahanin rushed inside. And the writer said, he smiled at his son to know that, yes, a child is born, a son is given. So, as I have the other introduction to make, just come forward, because this is just one chapter of the bird, and we can take it from there. That's the plan. Well, the question of the teaching again, I love how they are coming and teaching, but, um, I find a lot of one turn over the discussion a little to the idol family. What sister will they say? Doctor, sister will they say? Sister, doctor will they say? The chief person and brother Johnny, the um, president, sister will they say is president and brother Johnny is vice president. So I would have turned forward the Floor to one down one, Sister Velette, Brother Johnny, and then I take it from here and come forward. That's a bad idea. Right. So. <laughs> yes, hi. Greetings. Greetings and blessings. Pit four, Rastafari family. Give thanks, greetings, Ras I Vi, daughter I B, Ras I V, all the ones and ones that I see there coming together to give eyes and to give thanks on I and I High Hola Day, July 23rd. Yeah, man, we glorify in Kitama, we highly Selassie and Empress Men in Asfa, and I give thanks for the moments. Can the eyes hear I clear? Yes, you're clear. 
clear, my sister. Clear, clear, clear. Greetings, Ras Ivy. Love in the house, Rastafari. Yes, I, we give thanks. Yeah, man, we just, you know, we're coming in and, you know, we, we got the sound that the eyes wanted to share the platform in this very eyeful time of 129 earthly presence of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. And I and I found it prudent to really. Just one minute, just so well, I did. Yes, I. I I think this is all right. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, man is prudent, prudent, and um, necessary. I were, you know, and I know that I and I are trotting through very terrible and judgment times within the earth. Not any different from a one who's been trodden for 50 years or a one who's been trodden from maybe last strong. Terrible and judgment times within the earth. And these are times where I and I really need to tap into the vibration of Haile Selassie I and Empress Men in Asfa and be obedient, obedient servant, servants in the vineyard of goodness. So I and I are coming forward to share a sound with the eyes on education, not necessarily um, education that um, culminates with a one being called doctor or bachelor's or master's, not necessarily university or higher ed education, but the education that will allow I and I to safeguard I and I cells as a humanity and to preserve Africa and Rastafari liberty, the kind of education that His Majesty speaks about outside of the institutions, the kind of education that will teach I and I in these times, because that's what I and I have to do, brethren and sistren. We have to take the examples that His Majesty has given I and is giving I and I. I pray thee, take the examples when we listen to his majesty's speeches, when we listen to the opening of universities and various trade schools, when we listen to the word sound of his majesty at the graduations, when those students have accomplished what they have set out to do. I and I must take those examples, take those word sound and in obedience, apply it to what is necessary for our lives today as Rastafari people seeking to re-enter the continent of Africa. All of this I and I would be doing in obedience. So if you are a farmer, then you should farm the best to the best of your ability. If you are a seamstress, then you should sew. If you are a chef, then you should cook. And if you are born, with that very high intellectual ability like many of I and I are, then you should seek to expound on that and bring forward what has been learned to the community. You know, I and I going on the Zooms and a lot of ones are saying, oh, doctor this one and doctor that one. Yeah, for some of I and I, it's been 15 years, it's been 20 years. It's not anything recent and it was all done in obedience. And I and I have brought forward that higher learning, what Babylon considers to be a terminal education, the final level within Babylon I and I have conquered and brought that forward to I and I community to whom much is given, much is expected. So when you hear education, don't shy away. These are the words of Kedamawi Haile Selassie when he charges I and I with becoming members of a new race. He charges I and I with learning, seeking to develop ourselves, take it forward to the continent and uplift Africa. Right now, there's so much happening as it relates to ganja farming. Jamaica is leading or should be leading in the world as it relates to ganja farming. 
This is an Ihola sacrament. Who knows it more than the Rastafari of Jamaica and the Rastafari now globally? And I must take these treasures and these natural things that have been given to I and I as blessings, take them and use them to generate resources, economics, so that we can move forward the village. It's not individual work. It's not my work because for I, I can go to Africa in the morning, but it is the work of the community, the work of the people. I can't plant yam. You know, I, I can't farm. I could learn to farm, but a farmer would have to teach I. So I have to make sure when I re-enter Africa, I take the farmer with me. I have to make sure that I take the seamstress with me. I take the doctor or, or, or the, the, what you would call like the, um, the, the ones within the, in the Caribbean, how we call them, those people that we go to for healing. Sometimes you have a rash that won't go away and they say, oh, go down the street and check Miss May. She'll give you something to put on it. Let's not forget these people within I and I community because at the end of the day, this is the community. This is the village. This is the education of which we speak, right? So this is the word sound that I'm bringing to the eyes. I have my publication here. I heard Ras, Ras Ivai in his knowledge base, which is so broad, I heard him in his knowledge base blocking on the many births of Yeshima Bet Ali Abba Jifar, the mother of Lij Tafari. And I heard him speaking of all the youths that came forward and then went forward before they had a chance to really be born. Um, I have several things in the book. I'm not going to block on her um, transition. That's actually in here as well. But I will talk a little bit about her in this moment to just strengthen what my brethren was blocking. And then brother, brother Johnny will come forward and reason a little bit about a sound that his majesty blocked on education. So we're gonna loop it and come full circle to what I and I are reasoning on today but I wanted to just come in and touch this piece and strengthen a little bit about who Yeshima Bet is so that the eyes will have that knowledge because his majesty in, on July 23rd, 1892, came forward in the flesh, being born of Yeshima Bet Ali Abba Jifar and Ras Makonen and is the prof prophetic fulfillment on earth at the time of his majesty's coming forward, there had been three years of drought taking place in Ethiopia. And traditionally, Ethiopia full joyed two different rainy seasons. So that would have been an absence of six rainy seasons. For three years, there was no rain. I and I know that, that there has to be rain not just for the trees, for I and I. If there's no rain, there's no food. So if there's drought, there's famine. You know, there's no cattle, whether it's for sipping or for labor. For I and I would be labor, but there's no cattle because there's no rain. We know the importance of rain. And at the time of His Majesty's coming forward in the flesh, as Ras Makonen got the good news, that the youth had come forward, he was born, and what the seers and the astrologers had been prophesizing from such time had now been fulfilled as he exited the gate to make his way to the city of Hara, rain sprinkled on his tunic. His majesty's coming forward in the fulfillment of prophecy brought forward the end and a screeching halt to a three-year drought. So I will tell the eyes just a little bit about his majesty's mother. She was the daughter of Walata. So sort of like the name that I use, but the A on the end as opposed to the E. So it's Walata, Ihata, I-H-A-T-A, and Georgis, as in the Amharic for George. Walata, Ihata, Georgis. This is the name of Yeshimabet. Ali's mother. This is the name of 
his majesty's grandmother right so she was of um amhara i believe let me find where i'm reading i pray thee she was of um, amhara descent for one parent and the other parent was of um, guragi descent and the guragi um, the, and that's pronounced, that's spelled, um, it looks like garage, but it's actually G-U-R-A-G-E, Guragi. The Guragi are the, um, the ones within the Ethiopian culture that you often see with um, tattoos right around their third eye. So they may have a cross or they may have some other symbolism right about in this region. And that's not, not necessarily always Guragi, but often it's part of the, um, the Guragi culture. So uh, Yeshimabet's mother was part Amhara um, and part um, Guragi. Oh, it has a delay. Okay, I'm hearing it. Okay. All right. So let me tell the eyes a little bit about her. So it says it says here that um all right. I pray the the eyes here and I all right. Can the eyes hear I I Lafo? Yes, I Yes, sir. Blessed love. We give thanks. Yes, sir. So, Ms. Raskamara. Yes, sir. So, it says, while considerable documentation, and I'm reading from page 73 of my book, while considerable documentation about Wazero Yeshimabet Ali Abajifar deficient or not available, her character can be established based on that of her progeny based on that of her son. One can surmise without reservation that she's of esteemed integrity and regency. She was born to a father that had been a former trader from the region of Gondar. And we know um, based on what we know about Ethiopia that Gondar is the region of all the castles all of the little castles in Ethiopia, that's the region of Gondar. And we know that Lalibela would be the rock hewn churches. Oh, let me, okay. Someone is saying to mute all mics. It looked like, it looks like everyone is muted. Um, Press Oliver. Is there still feed forward? Are the eyes hearing feed forward? We're hearing you oh. clearly, Sister Woletti. all is well. But she's, uh, her, her father had been a trader from Gondar. And he went to the Waroilu region. And I'm gonna spell that so the eyes will know what I'm blocking. We're dealing with education. So the region of W-E-R-E, -E, pronounced Weru, and I-L-U, Waroilu, right? And that region is in the Wollo region, W-O-L-L-O. -L -L -O. So her father, a former trader from Gondar, and um, uh, gone over to the Waroilu region where he was now, a um, leader or sort of um, in charge of the Wuru'ilu clan or the Wuru'ilu people. So they speak about her coming from what is referred to as um, sort of a petty nobility. So she had some nobility in that her father was in charge of an entire region, in, entire clan. So um, to give the eyes an idea of what I'm re reasoning about, it would be like maybe um, a parish in Jamaica. So if you're talking about St. James Parish, that whole Montego Bay region, or um, St. Catherine, if that's a parish, is St. Catherine a parish? St. Catherine, right? So, um, right, her father was in charge of a region, the region in that Wollo region, which would be like a parish. And at times it was not limited just to that one region, wherever the people, wherever the people went to, and they often traveled sort of in a nomadic way, then it would expand his leadership of the region. So they considered Yeshimabet to come from petty nobility. This would be the grandfather of his majesty. 
right? Her mother was of Amhara and Guragi descent, and the mother's father was Ras um, Yilma, Yilma, um, who, you know, was um, prominent within um, Amhara. So she had some Amhara heritage, some Guragi heritage. She ended up living in the household of the ruling family at the time. She lived in the household of Ras Darge. And I'll tell the eyes that Ras Darge is the son of Negus Sahale Selassie, who would have been um, the king of Showa, the whole Showa region was his region that he ruled. They were the ruling family at the time. Ras, uh, Sahale's King uh, Sahale Selassie or Niga Sahale Selassie, she grew in that household. How did Yeshimabet get into the household of the ruling family all the way from Wollo? Um, the Wollo region is not that far off from there. Um, when I visited the region, I went from Addis Ababa on a small plane to the Kombolcha airport. From the Kombolcha airport, then you make your way via um, taxi to Desi, to the capital, to Desi. And then from Desi, and I made arrangements to charter a vehicle about four hours away to, um, to Wollo. So it's like if you're in Miami and you're going up to Orlando about three hours, or in the old days, before they had that bridge that takes you to Montego Bay, kind of the three hour travel coming from the city going into that country region, right? So she got there because her mother, Walata Ihata Georgis, was the wife of Sahale Selassie's son, Ras Darge. Yes, yeah, she was married to Ras Darge. His father was Negus Sahale Selassie, the king of Shoa. So this is the household that Yeshimabet grew in. Her mother has a child from that marriage. So Yeshimabet has a brother whose grandfather is um, Sahale Selassie. All right. Ras Darge being the son of Sahale Selassie means that Ras Darge's sister is the mother of Ras Makonen. Ras Makonen is the nephew of Ras Darge and also the grandson of Sahale Selassie, the king of Shoa. So you're seeing the Solomonic dynasty coming forward and the role that Ishimabet played coming in as the daughter of um, Walata Ihata, who was married to Ras Darge. And Ras Makonen, the first cousin, cousin of Menelik II, Ras Makonen uh, was given Yeshimabet from his uncle at the age of 12 years old, some reports, and I think even in my book, I might have mentioned age nine, which was not out of character. His majesty did away with those marriages, the child marriages, and he, um, um, what do you call it? That's now obsolete in Ethiopia. That doesn't exist, at least not legally. His majesty did away with that because he saw the disservice that that tradition could bring. It's customs and traditions. It's never malicious, but it's not always good for the people. You know, we, we, we overstand that. We remember the days when in the Caribbean, when you misbehave and they say, go in the corner and kneel on the grater and hold two book. <laughs> you're, holding, you're holding two book, one in each hand and you're on a grater in the corner. That's corporal punishment but customs and traditions at the time. In any event, His Majesty did away with that vibration, but she was given by her stepfather, who was the uncle of Ras Makonen at 12 years old. She was given in marriage. Ras Makonen was married to um, the mother, not married, I don't believe it was a formal marriage. It might've been one of the civil ceremonies that was so popular in Ethiopia at that time. But in any event, he was so smitten by what is referred to as her inordinate beauty. And he sealed his vibration with Yilma's mother and married Yishimabet. And then, you know, Ras, um, Ras Ivai gave an IDI story of the eight miscarriages, His Majesty coming forward as the ninth birth, and finally her transition in March, I believe March 14 of 18, um, 
94. So that would have been um, two years almost. It was March, so it was not quite two years. His Majesty Lich Tafari would have been one year and nine months old at the time. So my research has taught I that it was the 10th pregnancy that was the one that she transitioned um, there in. And His Majesty is the ninth and the only surviving child of Yeshimabet Ali Abba Jifar. So I just wanted to give the eyes a heavens around this mighty Jah that I and I serve, you know, and the, the coming forward. Um, first, like at the eyes is, I did read a little bit about the birth and the peasants that were filling the, the hilltops in clusters, fanning out so far that the eye could not see all of them with a um, armed. And at the time of the birth, when they let forward the gun salute, it rang out from every hillock you know, giving thanks and Isis for the coming forward of the pro prophetic child that had been spoken of. I told the eyes of the drought that came to a screeching halt at the time of his majesty's birth. And also, I will just mention this little piece and then I, and I will go forward to the, to the word sound on um, education. The little piece that I'm going to mention is that um, about Neptune and Pluto, where they speak about for several years, Rasmakonin's chaplains and astrologers had been foretelling the infant's birth. Neptune and Pluto, they explained, had slowly started moving toward each other in the year 1399. Both planets traveled along the heliocentric line, taking 493 years to intersect. So if the eyes can even imagine almost five centuries of travel for Pluto and Neptune, 493 years to intersect. And the moment of intersection would come in July of 1892, sparking off radiations from other zodiacal signs that would mystically influence the constellation Leo, which I and I know corresponds to the biblical house of Judah, right? Um, yes, I, so I wanted the eyes to hear that sound. It, uh, they had been traveling for almost 500 years. And at the time of the coming forward, of I and I ja, right, J July 23, 1892, at that time, in that same, not right. necessarily that Iowa, but in that Iowa, because if we're dealing with talking about a moon and the full cycle of the moon, it's considered an Iowa, whether it's the first strong or the fourth quarter, right, the first quarter or the fourth quarter. So in that Iowa, in July of 1892, after 493 years, they finally intersected and the radiation that was let off from their intersection influenced the Judah, the Judah uh, moon. And that was the coming forward, is the coming forward of Ainai Ja, Ainai King, Karmawi, Karmawi, Haile Selassie. So for these few words, I give, I give thanks. Rasaiva, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I have not sent the eyes book. Someone uh, was in Jamaica the other day, and it's on eyes my eyes heart to send. In, in someone was in the U.S. the other day, and I thought about sending it, but they were trotting to a region that they may never even see the eye. I might see the eye sooner, so I will get the information. I definitely will make it a, my business to do so and send a few copies over in that region, so ones and ones can sip up on the food. Yes, I. So for these few words, I give thanks. To Haile Selassie the first and Empress Men in Aspa. Glorious Isle of Ration, Iowa. So joyful to be seated up with the eyes on this 129th Earth Light Isle of Ration of 
Karamawi, Haile Selassie, Lich, Lich Tafari. Cha, yes, Tafari. We give thanks. I'm going to give the eyes of uh, Brother Johnny, who will block a little bit about some word sounds that he heard through his majesty and has interpreted as it relates to I and I responsibility for um, educating I and I elders, educating I and I youths, education, educating I and I nation. And when we speak of the nation, not just the nation of Rastafari, but the African nation. So we give thanks. Here's Brother Johnny. I is last in the first and eldest. Yeah, man, I give thanks and praises. You know, glory to world, glory to sound, glory to the Holy One of Iration. His Imperial Majesty Emperor, Emperor Alice Lassia. Give thanks to the King and Queen of Iration. Give thanks to the God and Goddesses. Yes, I, I give thanks to the, on this 129th Earth Strong, Earth Light of His Imperial Majesty Emperor Alice Lassia. A glorious occasion, an opportunity for I and I to come together in solidarity as one people, you know? Sorry. Yes, I, and I, 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 I lost just Empress mentioned the 500 year wait, 493 years, approximately 500 years for these two planetary alignments to take place, mm -hmm. for I and I to get to see the glory of the King of Kings. The king of the universe. Aile I Baba Janai. Yes, I will give thanks to the old stone. But as I and I talk about education, there's a speech Karamawi made at the, the opening of a boys' school in Ethiopia. And he says, Knowledge is a treasure that must be grasped and which no one can confiscate. It is a diamond without price which prevents the breaking of heaven's decrees and preserves from the path to destruction. Knowledge allows you to inherit the kingdom of God, which the mind of man cannot conceive. Mm. This is deep. His majesty is saying here, so the mind of man, I and I, can't even conceive that knowledge where he, he is speaking about. Yes, I. So the person read that piece again because it's so deep. Yeah. So knowledge allows you to inherit the kingdom of God, which the mind of man cannot conceive. And is a counselor in the time of adversity. And he asks that may God grant I and I that knowledge such that he has described. Yeah, Elis Lassie I the first. His imperial majesty had three main objectives when it comes to the future of I and I. He laid it out in the selected speeches where he talks about one, every Ethiopian, which means every African, every people of African descent must be steered from literacy. I, am, I and I must be literate. I and I must learn to read. I and I must be educated. It is very important to I and I, for I and I liberation from under the yoke of colonialism. Number two, the, to our own development and our inborn capabilities, I and I may become not a liability, but an asset to I and I nation, to the Rastafari nation, to the global Rastafari nation, to the global African nation. I and I must become an asset and not a liability. And education allows that. And, and, and for I and I community, wherever I and I dwells. And three, and most important, if not all three are important, but number three, I and I must ripen and mature in our knowledge and education and pass that on for posterity, for all oncoming generation to benefit from yes, that. And so I give thanks for those, those, those words. I give thanks for the I, the Impels here in Jamaica, pitfalls. I give thanks to I and I Universal Rastafari family. To, to have this platform so I and I can block with I and I brothers and sisters yeah. and all harms and hug one another in love and unity. All, for these words, I give thanks to my family. Blessed love. Yeah. I have been the eyes. Eyes, desire. Give thanks, brothers. Yeah.
Rastafari. So last year, the first time. Rastafari, Rastafari, yes, sir, Rastafari, come. Um, you know, you know, bring on your presenter, and then I uh, hear. Oh, we, we can't hear Russ IMV. Let me see. Okay. Is that here now? Okay, go forward. I'm just a little bit more closer to the equipment that's carrying the Zoom. So coming forward towards the computer would help. Oh, well, one, one thing I want to say is that I'm a Rustin Dalian, but now when I'm a young technician, I've done the next year, so that I'm a Rustin Dalian now, you know? So we're just asking Dalian to, you know, bring on your presenters and uh, be a listening, and there are others who are not in the tabernacle, but we'll be using two speakers outside. One by one, we'll still be here in the island. But, you know, we're looking at things from his imperial majesty's life, his contribution, you know, the education, the international politics, the inter-African dispute, how his majesty handles those situations so I know people can be aware of who the man was and is not just from, and I say, I slap the Israelite father, but for who I slap him, for whom he lived, what was his life like, in different, different ways, I slap him. Yes, sir, I give thanks, give thanks to us, I am being. Yeah, man. Ras, I have, oh, somebody's blocking. Yes, I Yes, yes, I love it. I'm here in the uh, yeah, man. I was putting up my finger saying three times and on that final time. And you know, I want to tell the gathering and the I, I think I've told the I before Ras Ivai that it was in 2013. So that would have been eight years ago, driving down the highway one morning. Um, the I is no arrest in Maryland, which is kind of on the Washington DC border. So they kind of just marry into each other sort of. And I um, was driving down the highway in 2013, one morning, just after 6 a.m. And I was giving eyes. It was a time in my life when I didn't like, you know, the, the quick eyes that I had been given, you know, as I, as I put my foot on the ground. Yes, highly Selassie, give thanks for life, guidance and detection for our family, just really quickly. And then you move into the the rat race of, of which Babylon is, you know? So I made a concerted effort to really, when I'm on the highway, no music on, nothing playing, just giving eyes for the 30 minutes. And at that time, eight years ago, I heard a very distinct sound within my heavens. It wasn't really a voice. It was more of a message. And the message was, I repeated it to say, you want me to write a book about your mother. I, I had just been chanting and giving eyes. And then I, I spoke that it wasn't an audible sound. No one in the vehicle would have heard it, but it was something that came into my iris and I blocked it. You want me to write a book about your mother? And this was 2013. And I believe it might have been about 2015 or 16. I said to my sister, to Rasses Jazanai, I said, sis, remember I did tell the I that his majesty asked I to write a book about his mother? And she repeated, yeah, man, you did tell I and you didn't do it. Yeah, I didn't do it. You see the obedience and to obey is better than sacrifice. So that's how the book came forward on that third trip to Ethiopia to actually trod to the region 
to reason with the people and look at archives and just find whatever it is there was. Yeah, that, that's how it came forward. It's not even a task I would have um, taken on on my own, but in obedience, as I heard the utterance, or at least recognized the utterance in my heavens, that this is the work that I should do. And in obedience, yeah, I brought it forward. So we give thanks.
that she had been going through in the nest. And she brought forth a man child that was brought up to God and his children. That's fulfillment of the prophecy. There they are. There they are. There they are. So, so we could write holy Yeshimabet, mother of God. Because it's from her womb came forth the king that we recognize today as God in flesh. So when, when, when the Orthodox Church would say, Hola Maria, mother of Christ, we are saying, Hola Yeshima, mother of Christ, the mother of God in flesh, the powerful truth. So we do want the birth of this child came with, with, with a whole lot of prophecies and mystic and mysticism. Because he's born under that star, you know, and, and when we read some of the wise um, um, chapters of Catchafire, why kingdom come? We see the many mystics that is revealed in that chapter. Not sure of the source, but it was said that when priests talked to him, he was describing how the courts of Solomon was adorned. When they look into his palm and see that his, his lifeline went into infinity, there were so many mystics about this. This young child, Tafara. It was said that Tafara was seen in the bushes having conversation with wild beasts. That man would run from there was docile at his feet. And we see his majesty, the Lord, the lion is the young and the Lord, and every bearing or even animals, you know, fall in his presence. Oh. So we know that this child was not an ordinary child. That's Makanen knew that. Yes, Magdalene going to the battle of Adowa ensure that the child was close by in a cave with his retainers and, and his midwives to ensure that this only begotten son of the union must be protected. When the Emperor Menelik heard of this young prince, Menelik the Magdalene sent that boy to him and what have him, him, him as his Adowa. And when, when he was about to take the journey with Yes, Magdalene, um, soldiers from, from Harar, Rasmokhanen looked at him and said, Tafara, even though you are small in stature, you are, you are courageous as a lion. Go forth. And so Tafara and his, his father, the soldier, went up to, to the palace of Menelik. When Menelik saw this young man, Menelik knew and said to Makonen, Makonen, this young man you're saying to me, he can't go back over all of us. He must tie his material. He cannot go over. He must have to stay with me at the palace. And when he was a young man, he astonished Menelik when he was seen talking to his French advisors, not in Hawaii, but in French. That's what the um, governor, um, Emperor Menelik was saying. Where did this dude get his vast knowledge? That as a young man at 17, I talked to my representatives from France in their language. He called the French envoy to say, Tell me something. Is that the boy, is that the prince talking to you in proper language? And he said, Oh, yes, your majesty. He's speaking to me in French. And then it was astonished at the brilliance of this young man. It was said that even when Visitors want to give gifts to the young child. He would say, No, I was not advised that I should receive a gift. I must be advised. That means that as a new little gift, they were fighting him bigger than I for seven year old. So we know his upbringing, his knowledge, you know, the wonder art of Emperor Menelik. But you know, coming up in the palace, you know, there was jealousy with him and his cousin, Rich Yasu, and there was a rock show going on. Yasu always feeling like all this little music and all this, and the good vibes, they don't want like him. He clung to the front page of the ladies in the palace floor. He was like, the, 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 the ladies pet, young Tafara. But why the knowledge that at early age, he became governor. Maybe I'm not trying to say the, the, the childhood thing. You know, governor in his queens, you know, we remember prior to, to, to many of passing, he had Tafara Yasu sign a, a treaty that 
the far right will do nothing to assert Rejected authority and rejected should never do anything to assert the far right authority and he become and he become the governor of IR. We know the history. We just broke all those codes. The far right kept his code when Menelik when Menelik died, yes, and and, and the king was to go to the throne. They, they understand all what took place in that whole situation. Because if the authority and the move the power from being, being the, 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 the governor of the mm -hmm. Oh, the Argus, I have been indicating that you have other presenters and you know that I will explain the question for the So, Sister Wesley, if there's other presenters, you can just ask them and take it from Safari in the palace, Safari going up to be crowned Ras, Safari. The Jasmine Safari, Rastafari, Yuga Safari, the Lion of Judah, and his contribution to Ethiopia, to the entire continent, to the Africa, and the world. Rastafari. Right. Yes. Sister Wallace, is there anyone else you have lined up? You're not hearing me, Sister Wallace? Sister Wallace, you're not hearing me. Before they be on mute, you're not hearing me. We need a response, Sister Wallace. You're not hearing me. Sister Wallace, you're on mute. Your mic is muted. Sister Wallace. We just want to know where we can have and see that you're not hearing. Hearing me, Sister Waletti? Sister Waletti, we are not hearing you. Is your mic still on mute? Yeah, we're seeing your mic muted, Sister Waletti. Is it so? Sister Waletti, we're not hearing from you. Um, is there someone in the technical room who can tell Sister Waletti we're not hearing her? Sister Waletti? Not hearing you, Sister Waletti. Sister Waletti? Someone is saying to her, we're not hearing her. Sister Waletti, can you hear us? Sister Waletti? I don't think she can hear us. Yeah, I know. Questions? Sister Waletti? Someone who is hearing your voice who is not hearing from Sister Wallet. I'm I'm here. The the I call and I Rasaivai. Yes, for, for a long time, a couple of minutes, we were not. Hearing oh, I pray thee. I'm so sorry. I pray thee. Forgiveness. Someone um someone called about the book that I just typed in. I pray thee. Forgiveness, brethren. All right. Well, you were hearing the conversation earlier. Right? I was hearing it in a fullness when the I was. Blocking on the coming forward, yes, and um, you should be better. And it's I did. We're saying, Chancellor, I want to have someone as a presenting any other aspect of you know, so far as upbringing as we're talking about. He's in the palace now with Emperor Menelik, yes, and 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 you know, governor later on, and then um, going up to Rastafara. So, you know, yes, I. Is um yeah what I what I had in the uh, the book did we we talk about the original uh, governorship after his brother Yilma the, the the governorship of Hara did we talk about that the um after his brother was the governor and he got the position a lot of times he was taken away from the role because he was still studying. He was still so young at that time. And there is a mention in the My Life and Ethiopia's Progress that even um, solidifies some of the research on Yeshimabet's mother, the same Walata Ihata, who, you know, she trod the earth long after her daughter's transition. And his majesty says, I did not worry about my affairs in Hara, 
as they were being handled by my very capable grandmother. And that that grandmother would have been Yeshima Bet's mother. And I thought that so mighty because this is the woman of the uh, um, Guragi and Amhara descent. So that family, you know how they like to say now with what's going on in Tigre, with the Amhara and the Tigre, the Oromo, and you know, this division that they speak about, that division is heard of in the Irits of Ayanai Ja, because even then the Guragi grandmother left her in charge to run the affairs in Hara while he continued his studying, you know, as was um, as was required to do this, you know, this mighty work. Rastafari. So we can tell yeah. because Rastafari is the asking, is there any other presenter you want to introduce? Oh, no, no. I, I, I pray the Rastafari and Rastafari. I know it was just Brother Johnny and I. I and I are riding up a mighty three light eyes over here in Brandywine. So ones and ones are on the grounds, you know, the hops man, the players of instruments, the chefs. So Brother Johnny and I took time out. Yeah, they are waiting. <laughs> All right, let me do it quickly because they said, coming up to 1916 now, when, when the clergy, when they, when they, when they, when they ministered, you know, the yes. council member saw that religiosity was going down the rock road. He was siding with Turks and Germans and all, and, and he was going on, on a tangent off to Islam, taking the, the, the line of Judah from the flag, picking up that there's no God, no Allah, and all these things that created a, 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 a stalemate with the, with the Iraqi. They said, no, this is not the way of an emperor of Ethiopia. So when they brought it to Safara, Rastafara, who was then crowned in 1916, when they brought it to him, he said to them, no, it is not for me to decide. I swore to court before the great emperor, Menelik Matai, would do nothing to assert the authority of which Yasu. So it's up to you and the clergy to decide his fate. If you have violated, I am not the one to have to remove. So they had a meeting, they consulted, they point out, pointed out many violations, and they called for his impeachment. That's in 1916. So on September 27, 1916, we have him being impeached. Um, Zali to ascend the throne as the first woman since Sheba, and she made a vow. And I always ask, which one of these daughters did get such a vow? Because she said, from this day on, I will no longer live with a man. I will remain terrible. She was not forced to do so. She was not asked by the clergy to do so. But she found it in her to say, a good self, from this day, I will not live with my husband. And he agreed, and they had a divorce. And she sat on the throne. She said, since God has granted me this throne as a woman, I made a vow not to live, no longer with a man. So she sat on the throne, and then Rastafara, the Jasna Safara, and then was then crowned. Rastafari was coming here to imperial throne, Rasa of Rasas, judge of judges, regent plenipotentiary, and he was ready. His government was now on his shoulder as a full kingdom of Isaiah behind the first thing. And to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and a government shall be over his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Ever-Living Father, and the Prince of Peace. There they are! There they are! There they are! Selassie! Rastafari! Rastafari! And God is Trinity. So therefore, his name would have been Haile Selassie, Mighty God. Haile, Might, God, Trinity. So Isaiah 9 verse 6 was then fulfilled. But of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the children of David. 
So he was in line and then continued his work, you know, as 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 a uh, as young master father again, you know, had each of the and he was a member of the youth organization again to add the Europe and said, No, no, we can't this little this little uncivilized country come join the nations uh, uh, among the nations. His project to add to have a fight, Rastafari had a fight in the league. That even when he employed an Italian, his majesty employed an Italian to represent Ethiopian kids to the league. That his majesty told his representatives, tell them at the league, say, when Europe were living in kids as savages, the Ethiopian practiced the highest form of Christianity. So we are talking to about being backward. So Rastafari did everything to win Ethiopia claim to be among the nations of nations. So we have to salute that great man. Rastafari fighting politically on our behalf. So 1916, he got to be impressive out of, out of um, the indigency, out of Europe for the first visit to Europe in 1924, start printing sacred books, stepping on gas, coming on gas, and how they start the education in the country. And that, yes, this was the way forward to Ethiopia. You know, they make sure they dance to a game, see man, all type of things they try and a whole lot of things they try and do. And then they do many grace and proper reason and intellectual ability, wonderful authority. And in 1928, she agreed that he must become legal Tafara. So he became king, and being king now, he was more empowered with more authority to do things. And then, as you know, the majority on the 2nd of April died from a, 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 a condition, and then Nigel Safari was then proclaimed emperor to the left. And his majesty took, he took seven, eight, seven months to organize his coronation. And it's to tell us of all grandeur that coronation was, you know, all 52 nations that were then came to the two of the assembly representative and they came and bowed before a black royal family. You know that we have to give thanks because it was the first time in history we have representative of these um, European powers going to Africa, bowing before a black family from the old. So we get time. And then having become emperor of the full authority now of governance. And in the first year, they did you of your written constitution. First leader of the world ever do that. First monarch ever do that in the world to, to, to share power with his people. And Majesty became that person, sharing all his people through a constitution that instituted parliament. You know, his Majesty set out now the education now of Minister Williams that became, you know, Minister of Education for many years, seeing to it that the blind was educated, you know, the dumb, you know, seeing that he was more physically able, went to school because he had a vision. That the only way Ethiopia can reclaim its rights in place it is true education. So we give thanks to our Majesty for our such that there's no Ethiopian today who can say they do not benefit from His Majesty laying his foundation. You know, here in Ethiopia, his first year line, his first year the after his first year aviation school, his first year line, his rural hospital school, from the private money. I mean, if you talk about his contribution to Ethiopia, it is so much. But it was a little bad man boy and hope of you will see how I'm grudges progress that this king was making. And then Benito Mussolini, that Jesuit, go over to Ethiopia with the blessing of Pius XI to try to disturb the progressiveness of the line of Julia. And we know if you talk about that in chapter there, it's all right, let's go read chapter 29. And, and, and it's going to start being until the end of all. But we can just say His Majesty's rule in conquering the Italians in 1941 was a pivotal rule in, a rule in world history. The rule is present at the league, set Ethiopia up 
not passing to the end until it I so as we are from night to All nations of the world because they prophesied to the world that judgment will take place, much striking in Europe that will burn in Europe. And it did happen, and it came back 27 years after in 1963. I will tell them that when I counted the rascal in Geneva. In 1936, he said, I prophesied, I told you what would have happened. He said, history testifies to the accuracy of the warning I gave. And the world realized now that, yes, the thing prophesied and it did manifest. World War II took place. And my majesty became man of the year again. And then his rule in, 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 in Africa was intensified. Then you know, it was trouble that go on in Africa. The yeah, Majesty wasn't a part of it. Majesty ensured that the approach to African unity in defense. Casablanca, Nigeria, and Monroe group would not have been able to have the approach to African unity from a position of oneness. So the, the OA became a reality under his leadership. And Talk about his role because the Irish that was the player truly by way of the continent and his work exemplified in such a way that you know Africa, Africa celebrated him as a founding father of African unity. You know, he, he brought Ethiopia into the 20th century in 98, and I majesty, you know, his foundation, his whole works, his 44 years on the throne proved that his reign in Ethiopia was truly. The golden era in Ethiopia history. What is that mean in Ethiopia now? If them, if if Abidas take selective seats, you can read it, you know. And if the Tigrayans read, you know, if I ever put up your tribalism, you know, who want the doors to follow the intervention, we cannot afford it. We pray for the people of Ethiopia as we, you know, from the look at we are coming up towards your close. We still want to be up with us for giving the chance before we go. Is there any anything else you want to say? Your panel want to say? Because we uh, yeah, we're gonna um we're gonna seal up with the bingy chant. I see I see brother Robbie is on there. Um brother Robbie Shilliam. Brother Ro Robbie, the day I want to give a statement on Rastafari International, the day I have something to say on behalf of yes, the sir. Sacrament Rastafari University. So Sacru. Yes, sir. I give give thanks, Sister Walletta. Um can the eye hear? Yes, sir. We can hear the eye. Yes, sir. Uh, glory to work, glory to sound, glory to power. Um, it's a blessing to be here and to speak with the eye um, on, on this uh, flight of his majesty. Um, I just wanted to block a quick sound on the, um, the UK connection with, with his majesty. Um, I was part of a, a set of ones um, who uh, did a um, part of uh, Mama Desta's uh, Rastafari movement exhibition in 2014. And then we um, took it forward to um, to the UK and it became um, known as Rastafari in Motion, which charted uh, the history of His Majesty in the UK and the Rastafari movement in the UK. And um, I worked with that um, with um, ones like um, Rashango Baku, um, Ras Kostafari, Sister Stella Headley. Um, and I wanted just to block us uh, two sounds on that. Um, one is that um, the only other, the only place outside of Ethiopia that His Majesty called home was Fairfield House in Bath in England, uh, and he, he called that home. Um, and um, what I and I see it as is the it, it, is the um, it, it is basically the Rastafari Embassy of the West. Um, and and I say that, and it links actually to the to the history of Pinnacle. And I, and I could do a little bit of um, reasoning on this, right? Because His, His Majesty bought the house um, in, in the summer of 1936. Um, and then he went forward to Ethiopia um, four years later in, 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 in 1940. Um, and, and there was a moment in that, in that portion of history where the only liberated territory on the African continent was actually the first floor, the upstairs of Fairfield House, where His Majesty um, ha had 
his office and his um, administrators, and they were uh, guiding the resistance movement from, from overseas. And it's in precisely that era where we get Pinnacle. So uh, I, it, it's an interesting um, reasoning to think about, to think about them, them two sites uh, together. Um, because, like I said, it's the only place outside of Ethiopia that His Majesty actually called his home. So that's the first thing that there, that there might be some other international coordinates which I and I can think of when we're telling the, 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 the history of Rastafari. And the second thing is that there's a picture of His Majesty um, taken at Fairfield House because he used to listen to the, he used to get recordings of the. Um, of, of, of the, um, the, the reports on how the, the war against um, the fascists were going. And um, he used to listen to it uh, in, in, in Fairfield House. Um, and one's reported um, tears and, and high emotion. And um, there's a picture of, of His Majesty, which, which, which is not the usual picture which I and I usually cite up. It's not a picture of, um, of, of, of one who is um, facing the cameras of the world um, um, with, with, with strong shoulders, but it's a picture. Ones might say vulnerability. I wouldn't say that, but I would say of, 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 of the weight of the world on his shoulders. And, and I'm saying that because you, God in man and man in God, the, the, the whole human experience is, 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 a, is an heretical experience. And as, as Mama Walete said at the beginning, you know, we're, we're working through trials and tribulations in Ethiopia now, but also around the world with the pandemic. And the weight of the world is on I and I's shoulders. But I and I can take comfort that the weight of the world was on His Majesty's shoulders, soldiers too, in, in the, the one place that he called home outside of Ethiopia. But that within a few years he'd be sitting back in the palace, saying that with faith, um, courage, and a just cause, David can still conquer Goliath. So for these few words, I give thanks. Yes, sir, uh, Ras Rabbi, we give thanks for the eyes, Irit, for that analysis and joyful 129th celebration. I want to the eye. The eye coming down to the eyes is okay, Pastor Farai. Yes, sir, Rasai, right. That was it for Ryan and I on this end. And I give thanks for the moments. Yes. Yes. As we all go off to our respective places of Isis. And we just ask that one is conveyed the love from the Pittsburgh Diabetes Center to yes. all the family. Yes, give thanks. Going forward. So, Ras, I have been here for some while. We get the hard terms together. Okay. Thank you for the thanks. And for one, thank one. Thanks, Ras, I have been. I've been a part of the listenership. Even though we're not present presenting. What's the thought? I just want to say to the I and the Igor family that and I look forward to the continuous cooperation and all the time. Yes, between I and I, between the I and the family. All the time. And, family, and to see how I can coordinate the wider Rastafari family, whether I'm over, whether I'm 12 tribe, whether I'm not being a car, at the end of the day, it's one occurrence in I and I have to Yes. So, irrespective of the other differences, and I cannot allow those philosophical differences to keep I and I apart. I and I need to work towards centralizing not only, for example, nationally here in Jamaica, but universally. We know there are jealousies, we are egoists, egos, but at the end of the day, like His Majesty said in 1963. There are those who claim that African unity is impossible because of the forces that put us from in that direction. Others in that. There are those who speak of African unity in some cultural tone. Let us confound them and send them into confusion. 
But there are others who look to Africa in arm for a bright future. So that is the road I am writing. And irrespective of the house of our mansion, but that is what has brought up our life. And I'm looking forward to the continuous communication between my and I with the big house. Yes, I, we give time. Love in the heart. Yes, it's for love, love. The reality, you know, we're still waiting on the copy for the entire day to order so we can share in our many classrooms at Big Big, the book of the machine. Yeah? So, yes, yes. Yes, Mr. Valente? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It will come. It will come. It will come. So I have been on the arts, we're going to seal up with one final chant, you know, one's, you know, most of us are fresh up now for the night of ISIS, but we still want to seal up with a nice little chant on the Farai's bird. It was in 
Tonight, Rome shook. Place into the place 
this year, you know, last year and all the judgment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The young prince who should take in this, you know, visual platform to give thanks. Yes, sir. We give thanks. Yes, sir. We are last year. You know, that I do a family since our left hand. Just want to give thanks to all the Ivan who tune in tonight and give thanks for the day. You know, coordination that this could have happened. And I, I look forward to these things happening between I and I within the Ivan in the house and the international life of our community. Again, and again. And again. I, I, love in the house. Yes, sir. Blessings, Brother Jakes, Sister Andreen. Jelani Naya, Bongo I, Mama I Lu, King Kush, Rasma Kapi, Warrior, Brother Robbie, Carlisle, Marvin, Sister Sheba, Mama I Fia, Love in the House, Dijas Much Kwasi, Sister Tasha, Bingi Carlton, Pit Four, Naya Bingi, I Jace, Mama Kua, Isla Benjamin, Love, 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 Come and Chant Isis if you're in the Maryland area, DC, Maryland, Virginia. Eyes is riding in Brandywine. We are crushed Rome. We are shook the thing. Come in, come here, love the King of Kings. Kamawi, Kaili, Celestia, Ja, Rastafari. We give thanks. Love, 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 Mama. Fire. Love, love. Uh, bless up, uh, Mama Baby. I, Mama Fire. Plate cloth. All the ones. <laughs> With word, power, and sound. So now I've been your family.